Welcome to my lecture online. Even though many chemical reactions happen at constant pressure, and things such as melting ice or freezing water also happen at constant pressure, sometimes there are processes, especially when we deal with gases, that do not happen at constant pressure. So how do we deal with that? How do we handle the P delta V? And I guess I didn't write that down. Oh, here we go. Uh, let's say the, the P delta V concept how do we deal with that when pressure is not constant? So that means that pressure could potentially be a function of volume. So if we see the pressure change like that, how do we calculate the work done? It is indeed the area underneath the curve, but we can do that by taking a very small slice of work, call that a small dw, that is equal to the pressure at that point, at the volume as the volume is changing, times the change in the volume. So the work is represented by that, the area, that little slice, that would be a small amount of work. And then if we want to do the work done by the entire change going from here to here, we simply add up all the small dw's, which is basically integrating the, the dw from the initial volume to the final volume, so that becomes p times delta v, or p times dv, where p is a function of the volume. As an example, let's say we use an isothermic process where the temperature remains constant, using the ideal gas equation where PV equals nRT, since n is the number of moles, R is the gas constant, T is the temperature, and since temperature is constant, nRT is a constant, so the product of the pressure times the volume is a constant. If we then solve for P by dividing both sides by V, then P becomes a function of V, which is nRT divided by V. And so here's a, a pictorial of what that process looks like. This is an isothermic process, the process happens along an isotherm from the initial volume to the final volume, and the work done will be the area underneath that curve. So let's find that area underneath the curve. So we can then say that the amount of work done is equal to the integral of all the dw's. Again, we're going to take a small little slice. This is going to be a dw, which is equal to the pressure at that point in the volume change times the width, which is a dv. So the width from there to there of that little slice is the dv. So dw is p times delta v. And so this is equal to the integral of p times dv from v initial to v final. Now we know that in an isothermic process, the function pressure is equal to nRT over v. Since nRT are constants, this can now be written as work is equal to nRT times the integral of dv over v from initial volume to final volume. And of course, you recognize that the integral of that would be the natural log of v, so this is equal to nRT times the natural log of v from v initial to v final. And then we plug in the limits, we find that the work done is equal to nRT times the natural log of v final minus v initial, which can then be written as a natural log of v final over v initial. So you can see that even if pressure isn't constant, we can still find the p delta v term. So when we need to find the change in enthalpy, if we then define that the change in enthalpy, oop, the change, get ahead of myself, the change in enthalpy is equal to the change in internal energy plus the work done by the system, and that would be P times V, not W, P times V. So realizing that there's a relationship between enthalpy and the work done by the system, the work done by the system may not be a constant value. It may have to be calculated depending upon the relationship between pressure and volume, but it can be done as well. And so it works for any kind of environment, even when the environment is such that the pressure is not constant. So that's how we do it in the case that pressure is not constant.